Good morning and welcome to Emmanuel Parish Church for our worship today. Today, Reverend Chiga will bring us the sermon on which he will reflect on the life of the queen or of our queen. She has dedicated her life to God, 70 years as supreme governor, as head of the church, and to this country. And it is only right and fitting that the sermon be dedicated to her today, and that from time to time we say something regarding the Queen. So we welcome you all. We meet in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. And also with you. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, the first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord. You shall love the Lord your God with all of your heart, with all of your soul, with all of your mind, and with all of your strength. The second is this, Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these. On these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Amen. Lord, have, have mercy. mercy. Let us confess our sins in penitence and faith, firmly resolve to keep God's commandments and to live in love and peace with all. Please sit or kneel. Having taken a moment, we say together, Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbor in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. We are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past, and grant that we may serve you in newness of life, to the glory of your name. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. We now stand to sing the Gloria. The Collect, our special prayer for today, for the 13th Sunday after Trinity. Almighty God, who called your church to bear witness that you were in Christ, reconciling the world to yourself, help us to proclaim the good news of your love, that all who hear it may be drawn to you, through whom who was lifted up upon the cross and reigns with you in unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Now have our Bible readings for today. 
our hymn number. Sorry, we have our next hymn. Hymn number 73. The first reading is taken from Exodus chapter 7, verses 14, chapter 32, 7 to 14. Exodus 32, 7 to 14. The Lord said to Moses, Go down at once. Your people whom you brought up out of the land of Egypt have acted perversely. They have, they have been quick to turn aside from the way that I commanded them. They have cast for themselves an image of a calf and have worshipped it and sacrificed to it and said, These are your gods. O Israel, who brought you up out of the land of Egypt? The Lord said to Moses, I have seen these people, how stiff-necked they are. Now let me alone, so that my wrath may burn hot against them, and I may consume them. And of you I will make a great nation. But Mo Moses employed the Lord his God and said, O Lord, why does your wrath burn hot against your people, whom you brought out of the land of Egypt with great power, and with mighty hand. Why should the Egyptians say it was with evil intent that he brought them out to kill them in the mountains and to consume them from the face of the earth? Turn from your face, wrath, change your mind, and do not, brought, do not bring disaster on your people. Remember Abraham, Isaac, and Israel, your servants, how you swore to them by your own self, saying to them, I will multiply your descendants like the stars of heaven, and all this land that I have promised I will give to your descendants, and they shall inherit it forever. And the Lord changed his mind about the disaster that he had planned to bring on his people. This is the word of the Lord. The New Testament reading is taken from 1 Timothy chapter 1, verses 12 to 17. I am grateful to Christ Jesus, our Lord, who has strengthened me, because he considered me faith faithful and appointed me to his service. Even though I was formerly a blasphemer, a persecutor, and a man of violence, but I received mercy because I had acted ignorantly in unbelief. And the grace of our Lord overflowed for me with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. The saying is sure and worthy of full acceptance, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the foremost. But for that very reason, I received mercy, so that in me, as the foremost, Jesus Christ might display the utmost patience as an example to those who would come to believe in him, for eternal life. To the King of the ages, immortal, invisible, the only God, be honor and glory forever and ever. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Please stand as we sing our gradual hymn, which will lead us into our gospel reading and sermon that Reverend Chigor will lead to us. Hymn number 346, My Song is Love Unknown. Our gospel reading comes from Luke chapter 15, reading from verse 1 to 10. Hear the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Glory to you, O Lord. Now all the tax collectors and sinners were coming near to listen to Jesus and the Pharisees and the scribes were grumbling and saying, This fellow welcomes sinners and eats with them. So he told them this parable. Which one of you, having a hundred sheep and losing one of them, does not leave the ninety-nine in the wilderness and go after the one that is lost until he finds it? 
When he has found it, he lays it on his shoulders and rejoices. And when he comes home, he calls together his friends and neighbors, saying to them, Rejoice with me, for I have found my sheep that was lost. Just so I tell you, there will be more joy in heaven over one sinner who repents than over 99 righteous people who need no repentance. Or what woman having 10 silver coins, if she loses one of them, does not light a lamp, sweep the house and search carefully until she finds it? When she has found it, she calls together her friends and neighbors, saying, Rejoice with me, for I have found the coin that I had lost. Just so I tell you, there is joy in the presence of the angels of God over one sinner who repents. This is the gospel of the Lord. I speak in the name of God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Please be seated. So today, um, we're going to just reflect a little bit on the life of uh, the Queen. Uh, We obviously had the sad news of her passing uh, in the past few days, and um, as we have this opportunity to worship together, it is uh, a great opportunity for us to reflect uh, on her life, and then also to think of what God might want us to take from it. The parables that I've just read to us talked about... um, you know, give examples of uh, somebody who lost a sheep, uh, who has 100 sheep, lost one, and then goes to look for it. And uh, so somebody who lost a coin and, you know, sweeps the ground looking for that coin. And these parables are used to draw our attention to what it is that gives God joy. And that's what I want us to hold on to. As we think about God, what gives God joy? Well, these parables set us an example of what it is that gives God joy. So as we think about the queen, we might wonder, what is it about her life that would give God joy? We can't always know for sure. We can just guess based on what we know about God. But based on that, we can think to ourselves, what is it about the life of the queen that would give God joy? Well, I can guess what it won't be. It cannot be uh, the kind of sort of opulent, rich life that she had, uh, you know, her riding in gold car- uh, carriages or wearing crowns that are uh, adorned with all manner of precious stones. I don't think it will be that. Nor will it be the, you know, the great banquets, the huge parties uh, with lots of fine food and drink with lots of uh, important people. I don't think it will be that. I don't think it will be the, um, the special planes or, 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 or ship or train that she rides in. I don't think it will be that either. Nor will it be the, uh, the big dignitaries that she's had the opportunities to meet in different parts of the world, the heads of states, and great people that the queen has met over her life. I doubt that any of these things would be the thing that will bring joy to God. A God whose character is illustrated to us by going in search of one sheep when they have 99, or looking for a coin, a woman looking for a coin, and actually says a widow looking for a coin, a God whose character is illustrated back to us with those stories cannot be a person who gets joyful at those things 
that I described. I think rather that is those aspects of the Queen's life which are quite often hidden from public view that might give God joy. For example, during COVID when we were all sort of hemmed in with COVID restrictions and nobody knew where things were going and the, the, those who were medically vulnerable, those who were either ill, were the ones at, uh, at gravest danger. And the Queen spoke to the country, reminding us of Jesus' teaching regarding the Good Samaritan and how we can be good neighbors to each other. The Queen saying to us, in effect, that it is through good neighborliness. It is by being there for each other that we can overpower and overcome the collective danger that we face due to COVID. That sense in which our greatest weapon is our good neighborliness. I think it's those kind of things, the way in which the Queen encourages us at a great time of adversity and using that story of the Good Samaritan. She also, in another speech to the nation, actually used the Good Samaritan to tell us how we are all special people. Now, I find that interesting because many people think of the Queen as the person that is special. But the Queen says, no, everybody is special and equal to God. Let me read out to you what she said. She said, the Good Samaritan, the Good Samaritan have emerged across societies uh, showing care and respect for all, regardless of gender, race, or background, reminding us that each one of us is special and equal in the, in the eyes of God. Just think about it. The queen, the head of the country, who everybody holds to such high regard, is the one telling us that actually we are all equal in the eyes of God. There was another time when she herself actually asked for prayers. In fact, when she ascended to the throne, um, she was coronated in uh, 1953, but the ascension was a year before in 1952. She asked people to pray for her, and I'll read out to you her exact words. She said, pray for me that God may give me wisdom and strength to carry out the solemn promises I shall be making and that I may faithfully serve him and you all the days of my life. Now think about it again. The queen asking for prayers, for everybody's prayers. And not only pledging to serve God and the people, but in that actually making it clear that it is through the power that comes from God and the prayers of other people that she would be able to do that was a clear sign of her humility and the place that she has under God as one needing God's help. I kind of think those are the kind of things that God will be looking out for. Those signs of humility, those encouragement to be good neighbors to other people rather than any sense uh, of opulence or anything like that. And the queen also talks about how she is accountable to God. I'll read out to you something she said in one of her speeches, how it is the teachings of Christ. I'll read the exact words. She said, for me, the teachings of Christ and my own personal accountability before God provides a framework in which I try to lead my life. So the queen is clearly saying that it is the teachings of Christ that guides her. And she says to us that she is accountable to God. Accountable means that it is whatever she's doing, she's thinking about how is God going to regard this. There are many people who hold the kind of power that she has who think they are accountable to no one and to nothing else but not. Queen Elizabeth, she very clearly saw herself as being accountable to God in the way she uses her position 
and the privileges that she had. And what about her sense of service? She often stressed this idea of serving others. Like when in 2012, when she prayed for the whole country, this is what she said. She said, it is my prayer this Christmas day that Jesus' examples and teachings will continue to bring people together to give the best of themselves in the service of others. This is somebody who is saying the service of others is about the most important thing that anybody can do. And she wasn't just saying it. She was living it out in her own life. Many of you would have noticed how two days before she died, she actually met with the prime minister and she stood up and smiled at the prime minister and shook her hand and she died two days later. Now, she wouldn't have been that well for her to have died two days later. She probably was ill, but she felt she had, as a, a matter of her service to the country and to the people of this country, that she would get up and greet the prime minister. And not only that, but greet her with a smile. That, sisters and brothers, is a great sign of service. So when she says that Jesus' teaching encourages us to serve others, she herself is showing that in her own life. She is exemplifying that in how she herself lives. And just this morning, I was hearing on the radio some of the things the Queen uh, said about the Church of England. I didn't even know she said this. The Church of England is, of course, the uh, kind of national church. Uh, there are some particular privileges we enjoy. The Queen is, is the head of the Church of England. She's not just the head of state. She's also the head of the Church of England. So because the Church of England is the national church, there are some things that, you know, some privileges we, we enjoy. You've got bishops of the Church of England sitting in the House of Lords. Um, I think they're called Lord, Lord Spirituals. You have somebody who is in the Church of England, priest who is a chaplain to the Speaker of the House of Commons, and so on and so forth. There are ways in which the Church of England is woven into the life of this country. But the Queen, in a speech, said that the Church of England is not just there for itself or for its members, that the Church of, Church of England is there to create a space where every Christian and people of every faith can be welcomed and have the freedom to practice their faith. And of course it is true. Those privileges that we have as Church of England is not for us alone, but for us to use it to create the space in this country where others of any faith can have the freedom to worship uh, their faith, to practice their faith. And what I see there, what the Queen was demonstrating there, is generosity. We may hold this position as a church, but we are supposed to use it generously to enable other people to worship in their own style. Generosity and selflessness, which the Queen demonstrated. Now, I say all these things not so that, in order to praise the queen as such, but to say that most of the important things in her life are things that any of us can do. These are things uh, to do with being there for others, things like being looking beyond oneself, things like generosity, which I've just mentioned. Things like accepting the teachings of Jesus and being humble towards God or being accountable towards God. These are all things that we can do. And why I'm, the reason why I make a distinction between those more queenly things and these other things is that ultimately... It is these other things, generosity, humility, selflessness, that she demonstrated. Those are the things that we believe that God looks out for. And those are things that we ourselves can show in our own life. 
Before I finish, I thought uh, there was a song that we sang. I wonder whether we can actually sing it uh, again, uh, Machi. This is, um, we can sing this sitting down, just to capture that sense of service. Uh, number 73, brothers, sisters, sister, let me serve you. Let me be as Christ to you. If there is one thing that we can remember this queen about, it's her sense of service. So if you're able to open your book, we'll sing this sitting down. Let us pray. Our God and Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for the life of our sister Elizabeth. We thank you, Lord, for the example of service that she showed to us. We pray, Lord, that you will continue to teach us how to always be there for others, how to uh, have the fire, the passion, the love of serving others burning in our hearts. For we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. May we all now stand to say the Nicene Creed. We say together, we believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, the maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father. God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made human. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He has come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, 
who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic Church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now be seated as we have our intercession. Let us pray. Let us pray for the church and the world we live in and the repose of the soul of our dear Queen Elizabeth II and her family of the world. Dear Lord and Father, we have come here this morning to you to give you thanks and praise you are God of our mercy. We ask you to hear our prayers this morning for the church and the world we live in. Lord, in your mercy, our Lord and our God in heaven, we pray for all Christian churches all over the world. Guide and bless our leaders, our two church leaders in this country, the two archbishops, Justin Welby, the Archbishop of Canterbury, and Stephen Cottrell, the Archbishop of York, to work together to inspire the faith of Christians and to inspire us to stand firm and strengthen the faith of Christians in this country and the world over. And we pray for Christians who are persecuted in their own countries. Lord, give them the courage to stand firm in your love. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, we pray for our church leaders who serve you in Emmanuel Church. We lift up your servant, Reverend Canon Dr. Chigo Chike and family, Reverend Ajeni Subaran and family, Reverend Canon Barnabas Matlub and family and Reverend Christopher Owen and family. Grant them good health and grace to serve you, Lord. And the good people in Emmanuel Church, and we thank you, Lord, for the work being done in our churchyard to improve the face of the churchyard. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, guide and direct the leaders and governments of, of the world to unite together to bring peace to countries where there are conflicts, disputes, and wars going on. We uphold the government and peoples of Russia and Ukraine to try and end the war going on between them. We leave the peoples and government of Afghanistan, Myanmar, Yemen, the people of Pakistan, going through heavy flood, ravaging their country. May other countries rally round and provide them with all they need to survive. Lord, bring peace and stability 
to the people of Nigeria at this difficult time in that country. Lord, may you love and peace reign in your world. Lord, in your mercy, dear Lord, we pray for the royal family of our land, Great Britain, and the people of Great Britain and other world for the death of your servant, our Queen Elizabeth II, and the royal family at this time, as you, Lord, have called our great Queen Elizabeth to your glory. Into that everlasting life with you, we pray you, Lord, to grant her eternal rest in your kingdom. We give thanks for the life she lived and served the people of this country and the world at large. Lord, comfort and strengthen her immediate family, our country, Great Britain, and the world at large. We pray for our new king, Charles II, the third. Give him your comfort as he starts his reign over the people of Great Britain and to emulate the footprint of his mother. Lord, be gracious to him. Long may he reign. Lord, grant the rest of the royal family your love and comfort as they mourn the passing of our dear queen with the rest of the world. We pray for our young prime minister, Liz Truss, as she was the last person to see the queen. Give her your fortitude to direct the affairs of our parliament, affairs of this country, and the people of this country. And we pray for the opposition parties to oppose wisely at this difficult time in our lives at this time. Lord, in your mercy, we pray for the sick, for those in hospitals, and at home, and especially those known to us in Emmanuel Church. We pray in silence, mention name if you wish. We remember Clive Clark, Di Reed, Beryl Melville, Matthew Provo, Stacia Ebank, Fenton Dixon, Estelle Johnson, Irene Oboma, Ine Chandler, Jenny Saunders, Anwa Shabazz, and Komal. Lord, be near and uphold all who are sick, both in body or mind and let them know that your love will be sufficient for them. Lift up your healing hands and touch them. Lord, in your mercy, our Lord and Father, we pray for all who have died. We continue to pray for our sister Mary Ann Piper, who have died to your divine love. Receive her into your kingdom and pray for all who mourn for her. Lord, receive her into your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, Lord our God, in all events and faces of our lives, we give you thanks for 
for your steadfast love and unchanging love, which sustains and directs us. We give you thanks as we have worshipped here this morning. Lead us out from this church to go and show your love to the people outside. Merciful Father, prayers for the sake of your Son, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Please stand for the peace. Brothers and sisters, Christ is our peace. He has reconciled us to God in one body by the cross. We meet in his name and share his peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. Let us share the sign of peace with each other however you wish. You can wave or you can pass shake each other's hand. Offer to him which is hymn number 27, Amazing Grace.
please turn to page 10 in your order of service booklet for this Eucharistic prayer. The Lord is here. His spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to, to give thanks and praise. praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise through your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word, through whom you have created all things, who was sent by you in your great goodness to be our Savior. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your son born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms on the cross for us. He put an end to death by dying for us and revealed the resurrection by rising to new life. So he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and singing. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and wine may be for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed, took bread, gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many, for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ, Christ has died. died. Christ, Christ is risen. risen. Christ, Christ will come, come again. again. And so, Father, calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension, and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving. We bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom, all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory be yours, almighty Father, forever and ever. Amen. Amen. Please sit or kneel as we say the Lord's Prayer together. 
Let us pray with confidence as our Savior has taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be your name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Most merciful Lord, your love compels us to come in. Our hands were unclean, our hearts were unprepared. We were not fit even to eat the crumbs from under your table. But you, Lord, are the God of our salvation and share your bread with sinners. So cleanse and feed us with the precious body and blood of your Son, that he may live in us and we in him and that we with the whole company of Christ may sit and eat in your kingdom. Amen. And for those who are worshiping from home and are watching us or viewing us today, we say this prayer together. Thanks be to you, Lord Jesus Christ, for all the benefits you have given us for all the pains and insults you have borne for us. Since we cannot now receive you in the building, we ask you to come spiritually into our hearts. O most merciful Redeemer, friend and brother, may we know you more clearly, love you more dearly, and follow you more nearly, day by day. Amen. Amen. Draw near with faith, Receive the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith with thanksgiving. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are those who are called to his supper. Lord, I am not worthy to receive you, but only say the word, and I shall be healed. All are welcome to receive bread. And if for any reason you do not wish to receive the bread, then please take your service booklet with you if you wish to have a blessing.
we turn to page 13 in our green booklet as we say the prayer of thanksgiving for what we have received. Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us. So we and all your children shall be free and the whole earth live to praise your name. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Now comes the time for our notices. Hello uh, everyone. Good to uh, see you all. Can I say uh, how especially wonderful it is to see Rose today? <laughs> so it's good to see you, Rose. Welcome back. I know um, some of us, one or two, have been in touch with you and speak to you, so uh, we kind of know you are well, but it's, um, it's, always, it's always different when you actually see uh, somebody physically. So. Uh, good to see you and um, welcome with uh, your your son and friend. So, yeah, welcome. A uh, couple of things to say um, now regarding the um, the death of the Queen. Uh, there are obviously different um, occasions going on in various places and uh, people doing various things. Uh, it feels to me that for us, uh, what we are going to do is to just you know remember and pray for the Queen. Uh, as part of our uh, church life, so like we've just done today, and during our morning prayer, we have morning prayer every day of the week, uh, those who are at morning prayer can remember to continue to pray for the family and for the country uh, at this time, and um, I haven't seen who's uh, preaching next week, but if they choose, they can also do some reflection uh, on the life of the Queen. So uh, what that means is that I don't think we're going to do any additional event. Uh, so it seems sufficient for us to continue to pray for the family and for the nation in the normal uh, life of the church in our services and prayers. Um, now, uh, as you all know, Marianne's, uh, Marianne's going to be buried on Wednesday. And... Um, uh, Jenny in particular and some of us have been in touch with the family just to make sure that there's some kind of coordination. Uh, what we have is agreed to do, and we sort of discussed this from last week, is to have uh, a service here, Christian service here, which will start at 1 o'clock. So we'll have a service here at 1 o'clock. And then... Um, the part of the plan uh, that the family have is to have a, a committal um, at um, the Sibet Road um, Cemetery at three o'clock. And then there is a um, reception planned uh, after that. But for us, you know, the key thing is going to be the opportunity we are going to have to gather here to say prayers and to pay tributes. So it will give us, our members here, an opportunity to be able to speak about the life of Mary. And I hope that many of you will feel able to be able to give tribute. Uh, we're also going to be sort of getting hymns, hymns we're going to sing on that day. I don't know whether Reverend Jenny might have something to say after when I finish, but I don't know whether as some of you know what were Mary Ann's favorite hymns. So if you know what particular hymns Marian actually liked, uh, please speak to either myself or Reverend Ajani uh, today. We have to get it today because we have to you know, start putting the service together. Or if you know uh, any particular reading that Marian uh, particularly liked, 
then you can say that as well. But it's, you know, we really have to get it today uh, in order to be able to prepare for the service on Wednesday. And if you have any photographs of Mary Ann, uh, if you can uh, give that to us. Um, if you have a photograph, we can blow it up ourselves, just like we did uh, to Paul's photograph, which is still at the back of the church. Um, and what we actually would like to do is to have a PowerPoint presentation, a presentation on a screen with several photos of Mary Ann. So if you have any photo at all, you know, however it is, uh, please bring it to us so that we can use it to put together a presentation which we will show on that day uh, on a screen. Uh, Reverend Ajin, I don't know whether you have anything to add to that. Yes, just adding to that, um, Mary's, Marianne's granddaughter has, is asking if anyone has um, any tribute that they would want to, even if they don't want to speak in person, that if you could write it out and, and send to her that because she would then put it on, on, on um, slides and then showing, she will be showing that at the hall. Um, and let me just say, as far as I know, I was with Michelle yesterday and she is looking for people to come because she's providing and preparing for people from the church to come. Now I know that this might sound a bit, you have to make up your own mind what you want to do. I will be going along, I'll be going to the grave and I'll be going to the, 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 um, the wisteria just down the road. As difficult as that may feel to me and as awkward as it may sound, I am going to go. And the reason that I am going to go, I, 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 you know that I was angry and upset about everything that happens, is that I don't feel that Marian is anything other or on any other faith apart from she's a Christian. And that is what kept me going. Because what I said to myself, I said, 91 years of service to God, just don't go down the drain like that. Jesus Christ knows all things best and we have to leave it to him to decide. I don't believe she's anything other than a Christian. So I'm going as a Christian. I'll be going in my, my priestly robes. I'll be going to the graveside and everything like that. As difficult as it may be, there is a challenge here for us as Christians to learn from. The road to salvation is never easy. It's winding, it's narrow, and it's rough. And these are the hurdles and the bumps that we will have to trip over. Put our pride aside and enter, because guess what? Jesus would have entered there. That is, that is my, my whole reflection on the whole thing. I'm not going to push anyone aside because we are not here to push anyone aside, we're here to bring them in. And that is how I feel about it. So I will go and I will do what I have to do and I will go to my home when it is time to go. Thank you. Thank you, Reverend Ajani. Um, I just want to say, I mean, it's wonderful that Ajani uh, is able to go and take part in other things, but I also understand that not everybody will feel that way. Um, unfortunately, I am not actually going to be around on Wednesday because of a meeting that uh, had been long planned, so I'm not going to be here. But I hope that people will feel free to make up their own mind whether they want to either go to uh, the cemetery or go to uh, the reception. But for those who do not want to go to either the cemetery or the, re the reception, I understand that there's a plan to do something. Kesi, do you want to come and say something about that? Good morning, church. 
Um, I want to say that with, um, yeah, with grief in my heart and pain, I'm saying all this. Our sister has passed on, and I believe she's resting with the Lord, because that is the faith that keeps on going, and that's what Christ taught us. As a sister, as a mother, as a fellow believer here, we owe our duty to keep her memory engraved in our heart. And as a church warden, I have to do what I have to do. Miriam is somebody who we know is always caring. You want to feed others. Sometimes she will be there feeding others, not caring when she's going to eat her portion. And we decided that we should have a full service for her, not just coming to pray, sing hymns, and walk away. We should have a light refreshment, share fellowship together through a light refreshment. I don't know how much we'll be able to raise and what we'll be able to prepare, but no matter how little it is, we should do it in the memory of our beloved sister who served us so dearly and departed. So we are appealing, like I said last Sunday, that we are going to need donations to buy a ring. Those who will be able to go to the gravesite, we present it on behalf of the church community. Then anything we have left, we'll use it for a light refreshment. So after the service, if you feel like donating anything, you can either see the church trader of Florence or come to me. Donations are welcome. Thank you and God bless you. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So I don't want us to keep the service going because our closing time is almost done. So you just come to me after the service and you want to donate, either in cash or in kind or anything. God bless you. Thank you, uh, Kessie. Uh, just quickly reiterate that everybody should feel free to make their own decision as to what they want to do. Okay, uh, the last thing that I want to just mention is, um, I'm sure some of you have seen the churchyard, and uh, we are still collecting uh, comments. If you haven't had the time to make a comment, uh, please uh, make a comment about what the church, church, churchyard is like, how you find it, because we are sending these comments to Newham Council. They want the comments to the as a way of showing that the funding that they have done is, um, is making an impact within the community. So there would be one or two people who would have like um, uh, a device like this or, if, or even a phone and they can help uh, take down your comments about the churchyard. Lawrence. Um, concerning the bazaar coming up on the 1st of October, um, I would like to just have a short meeting after the service. A few people are not here, but we can still go along and discuss what, how far we have reached so far. And next Saturday, next Saturday I would need some help to help sort out the, um, the stuff that we have. Next Saturday at 11 o'clock, so anyone would like to come along. I'll be here from 11, all been well, so please. And we still need volunteers to work on the stalls. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, Florence. Is there any birthdays today? Let's lighten the mood a bit. <laughs> any birthdays today? No birthdays? Anyone going or coming? Well, we welcome Rose back already. Rose, it's good to see you. So, so wonderful to see you today. So, yeah. <laughs> so.
the challenge of someone. doing the tea and the coffee. So yes, yeah, so someone will have to volunteer to do the tea and the coffee. <laughs> Rose is back. <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> we wouldn't put that on Rose. <laughs> but yeah, it's a very good answer, but I don't know if we want to put that on Rose. <laughs> yeah, but it's good to see Rose back. So, um, so where are you going? I'm going to Zimbabwe. Oh, so you're going to Zimbabwe for four weeks. Wow. Well, we want you to enjoy yourself. We ask Reverend G to pray for you. Our God and Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for our sister Diana. Thank you for all that she does here and all that she brings. Thank you for her life. Uh, Father, we pray uh, that you bless her, uh, protect her and guide her as she travels to Zimbabwe. Pray that you give her a wonderful stay, uh, that you would give her a wonderful welcome uh, from the people that she's going to meet there and other things and other reasons that she's going for, Lord, that you will be in those as well. And Father, when she completes and finishes, we pray that you bring her safely back to us. We give you thanks and commend her to you, and we pray all this in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Okay. Thank you. Okay. okay. Thank Have you a good time. Nice. Yeah. You're you. welcome. <laughs>